So right now we're all set to create our first multi-threading program. So I have a package over here called com.abi and over here I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to say this class is class test. And I want a main method. So I check this box and I finish. All right, I don't want this auto generated code. All right. So right now I have a simple class called test and it has a method uh, which is the main method over here. So one thing I just want to say you over here that any of the Java class, if you write, it has at least one thread. So right now this test class has one thread, which is the main thread. So every class contains a main thread. All right. So anything we write over here is the job of the main thread to complete the task. All right. So, but our intention over here to create some new threads so that we can run all those threads all together and we can see the beauty of multi-threading. So let's get started. So to create a thread, as I've already told you, we have two steps. First one is extending the thread class. Second one is implementing the runnable interface. So let's start it with the first approach. That is extending the thread class. All right. So to create a thread, we want to extend the class with the thread class. All right. So let's take another class over here. So I'll say class and I'll give the class as class name is mine thread. All right. Then my this class is extending thread class. All right. So we got another class over here which is my thread and it extend the thread class. All right. So right now this step is called defining a thread. So in this thread, we need to assign some tasks to this particular thread. All right. So any task we need to assign to the thread is should be inside the run method. All right. So we need to override the run method over here. I need a run method over here. So I'll write public void run method. Don't wonder, I'm just coming back to this point. All right, so I have a run method over here. So as I said, I'm overriding the run method over here. So when I say I'm overriding the run method, that means there is another run method present in the thread class. And yes, if you're wondering, is it correct? Then I just want to make you sure, yes, it's true. Uh, to make you sure, I'm going to walk through the Java API and in this API, I just want to go to the java.lang package because the thread class is just over there. And I'm going to search it for the thread class. And here we go. So I'm going to look forward to the run method. So is there any run method present? Yes, it's here. Run method. All right. So there is a run method present in the thread class. All right. So any of the work that we want to assign to the thread, we need to put that work inside the run method. All right. So here I just want to write something like, uh, hey, I am in child thread. Great. So here I have created a new thread. My thread name is my thread. And uh, this thread has a tax which is to print a particular line called hey I'm in child thread all right all right so right now I just want to print this particular line for 10 time all right so uh, we can do something like this we can put a for loop over here and uh, we can uh, loop through 10 time so that we don't need to print this particular line for 10 time so what I need to do int i equal to zero i less than equal to 10 and i plus plus all right so my thread uh, the task that i'm assigning to the mind thread is printing hey i'm in child thread this line for 10 times and this is the work of my thread all right so this is my thread number two 
As I said, all the classes in Java has at least one thread, and that thread is called main thread. So we have a class already called test class, and it has a main method. So this is our first thread, and this is the thread number two. I think you are clear. All right. So all right. So right now, what I need to do. Uh, um, before I write something over here, I just want to say you something. All right, see over here. As I said, this thread is just like a vehicle. Right now, our vehicle is ready. Uh, just think that this is your car, right? And your car is all set to go. But to start your car, you need a key. And then you can start your car and you can run away. But but to start your car, as I said, you need a key, all right? So like that, uh, to start this particular thread, you need something like a key. And that key is a method. And that method is start method. So if you want to start this particular thread, then you want a method that, that is called start method. And this, that method is present in thread class. All right. So right now, uh, to start this thread, we need a method called start method. And the start method is present in the thread class. Start method is pretty important in multi-threading because if you want to start a thread, you need to call the start method. Then only your thread will be start. So right now, to start your thread, you need to create the object for that. So let's create the object. Let me zoom it a little bit so that you can see it clearly. And now let's create the object for this. So it's my thread. I'll say m equal to new my thread. As you know how to create an object. So as I said, I need to start this particular thread. So how can I do that? I need the start method for that. So m dot start. All right. Right now we're all set. So here something important I just need to say. Let's see the flow of execution. Here is our main method, and here I'm creating the object of my thread. I mean, my thread class. So just after this, I am starting the thread. So that means from here, the main thread will start a new thread, and that thread is the child thread. This is the child thread, right? This is a different thread, right? So my main thread from here is starting a new thread, right? So from here, there will be two thread is available for this program. All right. Uh, so uh, m dot start will execute this particular lines of code. All right. All right. We'll get back to the start method uh, later in this video. Uh, but right now, we just we just know that the start method is useful to starting a thread. And without start method, we can't even imagine the multi-threading so that we can say start method is the heart of multi-threading. All right, it's pretty important. So let me write something right now um, over here for the main method, something I'll say, hey, I am in uh, main method. Uh, I can say I'm in main thread, all right? Um, okay, and similarly, I just want to put a follow loop over here. And in this for loop, I have, um, I just want to print it for 10 times. So int i equal to zero, i less than equal to, I'm sorry, i less than equal to 10 and i plus plus. And here we go. So before I go ahead and run this program, let's see this program in a glance again. So what we did over here is, we are creating the thread object as first. Then we are starting that thread with the help of that object that we have created. So when we say m.start, the start method will invoke the run method and this thread will be executed. And right after that, we want to print some lines, which is, hey, I'm in main thread for 10 times. So as this bunch of line is under main thread that's why the main thread is going to be taking care about this bunch of lines so right now it's pretty clear that we have two threads in this program 
but before I go and run this program I have a question for you so when I go ahead and run this program what will be the output is it hey I am in child thread for 10 times then followed by hey I am in main thread for 10 times or it will be hey I am in main thread for 10 times followed by hey I am in child thread for 10 times what will be the output then if your answer is uh, you know we can predict the output of this program because this is a threading program and in multi threading programs we can't predict the output so how can I say you the exact output that we're gonna have if your answer is this then you are correct because in multi-threading programs, we cannot predict the exact output. And that's because of the thread scheduler. I'm coming back to this point, but, but before that, let's go ahead and run this program. So here we got the output. So here, the main thread is executed for 10 times, then followed by child thread for 10 times. Okay. But let's go ahead and execute it again. See the difference. Here we are getting child thread for 10 times now, then followed by main thread for 10 times. So it's a pretty different output. Then let's go ahead and execute it for some more times. Child thread, main thread. Again I run this program. Main thread, child thread. But when I run this program again, here we can see first main thread is executed for one time then child thread is executed for 10 times then followed by main thread for nine times all right guys that's what i got for you in this video session hopefully you find this video entertaining as well as educational if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for next updates see you later